Okay, so I'm going to do the main body now of the Contempt to Dreadnought from the Age of Darkness. Uh, dead simple actually this part, or it looks quite simple. So, starting with 32 and 33. So, we're just following my actual um, green here, not 32 and 33, 31 and 33. So... one it's off nice and quick and then so that's that one and thirty two there we go I've actually been practicing my Imperial Fifth painting scheme. That's why my fingers have gone yellow since the last video. I'm really trying to perfect it. And I think once I'm happy with it, then I might take the risk and document how I did it. Uh, I, will, I do use an air, an air gun. I know... Not everyone likes using air guns or actually has one, but it just makes life so much easier. I think as far as like if you're putting your hobby money somewhere, it's definitely a, something that I recommend. Honestly, I think it's one of the better, better uses of your money. So what you want with this one here is you want to try and see, Ooh, get it the right way around. You're trying to basically slot that part over like that. Oh, probably shouldn't be doing this right now because my fingers have gone numb. <laughs> Right, I'll try that again and do it the right way around this time, because I've just realised. Right, it's that way around. And then it kind of slides into there, like that. and then move on to 33 and 34 which are these ones here I'm going to do 33 first because they've got a very similar look to them and I don't want to get myself confused about which one I'm doing first so we've got 33 which is going to go to the left And you want the pipe kind of heading towards the back of the model. It's going to kind of fit together like that. So you can see here it kind of slides into that point and then clicks into there.
and same again on the opposite side to the right side don't be afraid to tap this a couple of times to get the air between it Okay, it'll glue better later on, it'll glue more solid bond, it'll also glue faster. Okay. And then moving on to 35 now to do along the top. This is basically, I think this is where the head kind of nests in to it. Basically, we want it, it's going to kind of sink in like that. Thirty-six and thirty-seven. So this is the two sides of the helmet. I'm going to have to catch up on my reading, I really do, because I think that really helps me kind of inspire, because I do love telling my stories about my different... different... anything to do, really. I've got I've got an idea for my Night Lords of Story behind them at the moment, but I won't go into that until the next time that I do a Night Lord model. But what I'm curious about is, reading up, I know a couple of Thunder Warriors managed to survive the Purge. As seen in the story, the kind of outcast dead. And I'm wondering if there's any stories out there of whether or not there were Thunder Warrior Dreadnoughts. Because that would be very interesting, wouldn't it? If they'd somehow managed to have Thunder Warrior Dreadnoughts. And if they did, did they'll get perched alongside. So I'd be curious about that, actually, because then you could, even just for fun, you could build a Dreadnought, couldn't you? With a Thunder Warrior style to them. Right, okay, I'm just going to pop his head into here now. Think about his positioning. I'm going to try and keep it perfectly straight. I don't really want to have this turning or twisting this one. I want it to be nice and straight. And then we're going to get the 38 and 39 plates now. Just a wrap around armour for the model. Now, I'm really liking the look of this plate, so it's got to go kind of backwards, wrapping around the arm. 
which means that I probably want to put my glue there. Probably a little bit there, not too much. Should uh, put a nice bond for that. And then I'll go and get 39 and do the same on the other side. And same again with this one. I'm going to put a bit of glue on that look, just to help it bond. And then I really do need to make sure that that front plate is aligned to each other. Because the last thing I want is that splitting apart while it's drying and creating a horrible hole. Okay. Well, that's drying. Um, then I'm going to get number 40, which is this front plate. So this is just basically going to slot over here. That's why it's important that that helmet goes in before, because if you do it the other way, then obviously you're not going to, you're going to be squeeze, trying to squeeze that head in, and it's just not going to work. If you are planning on doing any conversions, obviously you're going to have to put your converted helmet in before you go through that process. Okay, and now we need 41 to arc over the top. And then with this, we want the grill to be pointing towards the back. Yeah, now this is the problem. It's about making sure that it is actually slotting together nicely and that there's no gaps. So you're probably gonna have to kind of hold it until it properly bonds. Now me being me, what I will do is if I do see any gaps later on, I'm basically just gonna fill them in with modeling putty and then smooth them off. I tend to find that that does happen sometimes with these. That they don't quite fit together perfectly for whatever reason. You just kind of, let's see, got a tiny little gap there and I can't see any reason for it because these are perfectly held together. Everything's in the right place. Yet still we have a bit of a gap that I wouldn't expect or wouldn't want. 
But as I said, I'm just going to, uh, I'll just fill them in later on with modelling putty. Okay, now 42 and 43, which is our exhaust ports. Do all the exhaust ports on miniatures, don't they? I mean, what's an exhaust? What, what what's it for, really? I mean, what what fuel do you put in a? <laughs> what fuel do you put in a dreadnought? I mean, do you fill it up with unleaded? I don't know. <laughs> we just got this vision of them. Um, Legion surf. Uh, Pumping gas. I don't know. I don't know. Might just be cool wouldn't it, for the reactor if it's a vision or fusion reactor, it's going to generate a lot of heat, so it's probably just there to let steam out. Which I definitely like the idea of actually. Just but one of the things that I've always wanted to do is either with the uh, Age of Sigma or Warhammer forty K is actually have a steam gargant. I love the idea of one. I just think the, the idea behind it is lovely, the idea of a gargant powered by nothing but steam. So probably have to start off on a stomper, wouldn't I? Okay, and then this needs to have uh, 44 and 45. And this will act as armour for the exhaust ports. I mean, I think one thing I've always wanted, like, one thing that I go into is whether or not you should show rust on a Space Marine vehicles exhaust ports now I have to admit personally it depends on the space marines if they're a chapter that's known for having you know a good cohort of mechanics I can't imagine that you know you know, a proper base of operations and everything like that, I imagine that they'll be less inclined to have corrosion. Chaos Space Marines definitely, yeah, got to go for that. And I think, obviously, with what I'm going for with the Imperial Fists, no, they're not going to have any rust on their exhaust. Everything's going to be clean, pristine, battle-damaged, but not uncared for. Whereas my Night Lords, uh, as I said, I've, I think I'm developing a story behind those. And I'm excited to share it, but I'm not going to share it right now. Because I want that to be something that I discuss while I'm putting it together. Oh, you see, that other side fell off. Come on, back on. Just pop that back on. See, what I've done there is I've not done this. Because I've not done that, it's not dried quick enough. Okay, and then all I need to do now is pop that onto the back of the dreadnought. Which is here, where these exhaust ports meet up. Again, just to help it dry faster, I'm going to let the air get into it. Be 
go. You should feel that slide onto these. Back exhaust, push it all the way down. Make sure it's all the way on. And then, finally, I'm just going to very quickly put on the missile rack. Now, this is 46, 47 and 48, because that's the body then created. And the weapons are all on a different sprue, so I'm thinking it's probably best just to get this finished off, mounted on that body, and then we can go into the choices of weapon options later on nice and happily. Having a quick look at this, the gotta just line up those two here. Ooh. And then we got the front part. Must be not perfectly flat there. Otherwise, that would have gone on neatly. Okay, and then I'm going to mount that on the top. Now it looks like it will just very neatly slot there. Now do I want it? I think might need to go a tiny bit further back along. There we go. It's about finding the perfect point for it to go on really so it feels like it's in the right place. There. There we go, and that is the body. Um, all you need to do then is grab the legs from before, <laughs> which I put on the other side of the room, foolish of me. And then just let that get a bit of breath, and it'll start to glue together, and you can decide which direction you want it facing if you want it slightly off. 